Hi everyone, uh, it's me, Sean Barton from Thoughts IT. Um, today I wanted to show you a plugin that I, well, <laughs> as ever, a plugin that I have produced and um, wanted to kind of show you how to set it up, how to um, present it, and uh, just to give a bit of a showcase, really. Now, I've got a few um, which are in the process of being released, um, all of which um, seem to be, at the moment, based around submissions of forms, storing some data, and of course presenting it on the front end in, um, uh, in a format much like uh, testimonials, case studies, anything like that. So, um, as some of you might be aware, I have a plugin called the Slick Carousel Slider plugin. And what this originally allowed you to do was to um, <clears throat> basically create a slider or a carousel um, with static images. Well, that now does a lot more. Um, a few versions ago, I released the ability to pull content from a post type uh, and present that instead in, in the same carousel slider format. And that kind of got me thinking that I could do a bit more with it. Now, um, there are a few testimonials plugins kicking around these days. Uh, so I thought I would um, sort of chip in my own contribution just to show people how they can use a combination of plugins, um, in fact two, <laughs> maybe three, um, plugins to create quite a nice little slider. Now a better video is being created elsewhere. Um, and this is more a how to use video rather than a, um, a marketing tool. So um, hopefully it'll just be quite functional for you. Now I've got these plugins active at the moment. So on this site currently, um, this is my local test site here. I've got quite a few, but actually the only ones we need at the moment are the Divi Testimonials Carousel slash Slider, which is a, a, a bridge plugin for testimonials, the ET Slick Carousel module, which actually comes with the Testimonials Carousel Slider as a bundle, and that actually is the meat of the, the carousel itself, um, and this new plugin, the uh, SB Divi Contact Form DB. Now, the name may change. Um, but it kind of does what it says in the tin. Now, I'll show you on the front end what it is that these do. Um, so if we have a look at the testimonials page that I've hastily put together, what we see here is a rather ugly but functional page to show um, a carousel, just a carousel to show a number of actually testimonial content where this is the title and this is the content aspect um, in a carousel format, so there's two showing we can make it three, five, one, whatever, um, and a form below to actually submit a new testimonial. Now I'll show you how this has been built. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is um, a the carousel itself, which is the uh, Slick Loop Archive module, so we get a few with the, uh, the Slick Carousel plugin. The Loop Archive one is the one that allows you to pull from content, a post type, or anywhere else. So we edit that and now we can pick a loop layout. Now if you've seen my other injector plugins, you'll know what this loop layout is. But effectively, um, if there are three testimonials in our carousel, then it would call this layout from the Divi library three times, each time um, changing the data. So if, if you're, let's, well, let's have a look at it, testimonial item. So let's go and have a look at the Divi library here. I've got quite a few and testimonial item here, it's a layout, it's not global. It just sits here. And it's one column, but it could be two, three, whatever. Um, and this basically means it's going to be one of the testimonials. And as you can see, we've got slick content, which is the content. You don't add it here, it's just, just dynamic. It picks it up from the post, tells you whether it's going to be the full text or the excerpt, or you want to read more tag. Quite a few options there, loads of advanced design settings to play with. Uh, and title, which again, you don't have to enter. It's just as you'd expect. Now you can do things like show meta if you wanted to, which is the date, the, the category, the comment count. If you wanted to use this to show posts, for instance, here, or case studies. Um, but that layout just sits there. You can style it in the normal way. Um, but if you ever want to change the way a carousel looks globally, just come and edit this layout and it will, it will work throughout. So in our testimonials page, we get to see um, the carousel doing its thing, which I, th I think you saw initially anyway. So we'll, we'll explain that momentarily. I'll just quiz over it. So our post type is going to be testimonials, which is here. It's just been set up by the testimonials bridge plugin I've, I've created. We want 10 of them. 
if there are 10. You don't really want to include all of them because it'll slow the page down, but just a few is enough. And the ability to um, offset by a certain taxonomy. Now that's the post options. If you go further down, we've got the option to mess around with the arrows, the dots, have it auto play, etc. etc. Slides to show and slides to scroll are what makes the carousel a carousel. So two, showing two slides is going to show more two slides. 50-50. Um, if it was three, you'd obviously have three columns. If it's one, it would just act like a normal slider. Uh, and slides to scroll is quite interesting because um, if you're showing two and you click and you know, this is one, when you press next or it auto moves, obviously it will only go one post to the left or to the right. Whereas, um, so it, it kind of moves in a, in a, a, like a juddery type, uh, um, bit by bit, carousel style in fact. So there's loads of different options there, but that's another video for another day. So um, it's a bit of fun. Um, so we've got our loop archive. Now the reason for this video here is this contact form. Now the contact form is the standard Divi contact form. All I've done is added, I've changed message to, um, I've relabeled it to testimonial. And I've added <coughs> a company field, which um, is just here. So it's just the field ID, company, title, company, nice and easy no frills and I've changed the submission message to say thanks very much you've given us a testimonial. Um, obviously put my email address in um, and I've put a little label across the top. I haven't styled it at all at the moment this is exactly as you expect it to be. So but this is the carousel and obviously this is the the contact form this could be smaller, larger, it could have you know just have one field if you wanted anything you want because this is the default Divi built-in contact form which works a treat actually um, I've seen a few people complaining about deliverability issues um, that's not the contact forms fault um, sometimes if you have trying to send email from a server um, I would suggest adding an SMTP plugin which will increase deliverability no end so the submit a testimonial if we do one here for the sake of the video video example spelled correctly and I'll just use my email address again. This um, here is the company field. So I'll just add company name and the testimonial. Testimonial for video. It's great. There we go. And some simple maths, 28. Okay. It's going to say thanks for submitting. Once approved, it'll appear on our site. And that's great because that's what we want to see. Eventually, this testimonials page will grow. We don't have to use the, um, the slider at all. We could just show it in a list view using something like CPT injector or anything else. Um, this is really just a way of submitting things. This also works for contact forms. So if we go to our contact form page, I've got another just a, just a contact form. So, you know, contact us, a map, opening hours, and a form. So the form could be a contact video, whoops, video example, and I will add video at example.com. Doesn't really matter. This is an example form the video. There you go, well, that's even simpler maths. 15. Nice simple submission. Thanks for contacting us. Now that by default would simply email me that information, the email address in the form. But what this plugin does, the um, contact form DB, not only does it have this banner at the top of the site, which kind of keeps you appraised of who's been trying to get in touch with you, how many people, and the ability to mark them all as red, because of, obviously this is going to your inbox, if you're quite up on your emails, then you don't really want a red banner showing all the time, so you can mark them as red. So there's a red status here, there's three that which we've submitted, one prior to this video being created and then two on the video. We have a Divi DB post type here, it says read only post type, there's no pop out, there's no other options here. And when we click into it, what we see here is a, a view submission button, simple, the ability to delete it, um, the email address that you've submitted, so just give you a bit of help here. The fact it's been unread, a little closed envelope there, or read, by who, as in which admin user, and at what time and date. Quite useful for some things, accountability and all that. <coughs> Cloned, I will come back to shortly, but that's the ability to um, convert these contact form submissions into other post types, very, very useful. Where it was submitted, and obviously if you hover over that, I can actually take you to the front end of the site, to the page, just in case you didn't know, or wanted to go and have a play with it, and of course the date. 
So let's have a look at the video example here, the contact form submission. So we click on the contact and the view submission and we get, again, first read by Sean because I'm viewing it. So it's now going to uh, update. So if I refresh the page, that number will change to a two. The form submission information. So this is the boring stuff. This is just what they typed in. Again, accountability. We've got uh, some information here showing, um, well, everything that was submitted. So never again will you have to say to somebody, oh, sorry, I didn't get that contact. It, it didn't show. It didn't come through to my inbox. So this is a nice, easy way of recalling it. Now, this list can go on forever, uh, this um, contact form list here. Um, it, it can be used for anything, but you can delete them when you've done. It's up to you. Um, extra information. So who did, who submitted it and when with useful links here. So for instance, you can view the page the contact form was submitted on. You can edit it if you want to go mess around with it. Um, you can view the user profile of the admin who um, sub, uh, who filled it, sorry, submitted it. So obviously this, this is me who submitted it, but let's say this was a normal user. Um, somebody wants support for something on your site or somebody wants to leave you some feedback or whatever. Uh, it could even be um, submission of article contents on a community website. So if they have a WordPress user account, that is going to show their name here with a link to their profile. Now, view eight more submissions by this user. Now, I've clearly been testing this quite a lot and using my own uh, login to do so. So this list is quite big. You wouldn't often have this, but if someone is submitting lots of contact forms, it's just a way of grouping them together. So we click on that and it's other submissions made by the same person and it gives us a list and that will actually take us through this, this page will, this block here will get a bit prettier when time comes, but these are effectively the date of their submissions with a link, which when we click on it, will take you to this equivalent page, but, you know, whichever, the other submission. Okay, we've got some, we've got some information here, actions, we'll come back to that, and some debug information, everyone loves a bit of debug, so this is the PHP array, which is just the raw information, so if you ever need to come back and look at exactly what was submitted, we do have the exact submission. Those people who are um, want to analyse different page loads, where people are coming from, that sort of thing, which browser they're using, this information is all stored in here, and indeed reusable, if, if we wanted to pull it out of the database again, we could process it en masse. So that's there for future use, but also if you needed to kind of pick contact apart. IP address, you know, to see who's filling things in, that sort of thing. Reply via email is pretty self-explanatory. That is a mail to link, which allows you to click that and it'll open up your mail client and um, with a uh, video example.com address filled in so you can um, reply to this person. And this uh, copy to another post type, which we've touched on, I've called it clone elsewhere. Um, but in short, um, this rather useful feature allows us to um, copy the contents up here, the name, email address, message, etc., to somewhere else, whether it be a case study, whether it be a testimonial, whether it be a blog post, entirely up to you. Do whatever you like. Could be a CRM yeah, row. You could be having a, running a CRM plugin elsewhere, which might have its own post type. This will allow us to um, add a lead in. Um, I'm actually going to flick across to the testimonial now because that's an easier one to show you. Testimonials here, let view submissions. Now, if I click into that, this one should have more information. So the company, the testimonial for video, it's great. Um, and um, but not much else, really. Now, same sort of screen, exactly the same. You'll notice that we're down to two unread submissions. In fact, if I refresh it now, I should go down to one. There you go. Um, now, if we pop down here to copy to another post type, we'd like to make a testimonial out of this. So we'll go select post type, testimonials, and then we've got some, some fields to play with. So these are field mapping. So these are the fields in the contact form. And these are just a few uh, fields within the, the testimonials post type, which we can copy to. So the name, we want the name to be the title of the testimonial. And we'd like the testimonial itself to be the content. Now you've got custom fields. So you've got these boxes over here. Custom fields are in fact custom fields. So if you'd like, if you have a post type, which uses a plugin like Advanced Custom Fields, or you're using them in your theme, you can copy these to anything you like. So email address, let's have custom fields, and we'll call it email. And company, we'll call it custom field, and we'll call it company. Doesn't really matter. This will stay save in the post meta table against the new creation. Um, uh, it will, it will um, put these information in, these items in. Um, 
with the appropriate values accordingly. Now the checkbox here, pretty straightforward. If I press copy a week after it was submitted without checking that box, the date of the new post being created will be there and then. So there's a time and a place for that if you wanted it to be most recent news, that sort of thing, most recent testimonial. Uh, if you wanted to keep the date the same, you know, testimonial date might be important, the case study date might be important, anything you like, we'll check the box. So we'll do that anyway. And we'll click copy. Now what this should do, will do in fact, whilst we're waiting, is successfully copied content of this contact form submission to another post type. Click here to view or edit. So if you look, click in, look in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, you'll see post type equals testimonial and P equals 241. Now that's obviously not the URL, but in this case it is. Um, if you click on that, that takes you through to the testimonial. And edit, of course, allows us to go and edit that straight away, as you might want to do. Now what we see down here in the actions section is um, you've got this copy down the post type button. We can copy it again and again and again, as many different places as we want. But this clone history button um, section has appeared, and it's, it knows now that we've actually copied this to the testimonials post type. It's called video example, and here's the date we cloned it. And of course, we've got the view button and the edit button there again, just for convenience, really. So let's go and have a look at our testimonials. It should be in there, I hope. There you go. It's a draft, so you can mess around with it. Video example, and let's have a look at the content. Video example is the content. Testimonial for video is great, is the content. I don't think I have um, uh, custom fields turned on for this, but I assure you they are there. So let's publish it. Go and have a look at our testimonial slider on the front end now, shall we? So if I have a look here, testimonials. Now, here you go, look straight away. Testimonial for video, it's great. Straight in there. We don't have to worry about entering any information ourselves and using the normal contact form that comes with Divi, we're then able to create any post type. Now I have used testimonials as an example here. For obvious reasons, I have a testimonial plugin out there that I'd like you all to buy. But that's not the that's not really the important thing here. The, the, the um, the main um, aspect of this sort of demonstration is showing you how to create this page, which I think look, well, it doesn't look great on mine because <laughs> it can need a bit of a style, but it's not bad. Um, and it's to show you that you can use a contact form to do anything you like uh, in terms of data storage. Uh, and also that you're never again going to lose a um, that you're going to lose a contact form submissions submission just because you haven't received the email or it's gone to spam or you can't find it because it will certainly be in the back end of the site. Now this red banner is persistent. It'll be annoying, but you're not going to miss another contact form submission. I will add the option to turn it off if you like, but for now this is really good. So we can click click here to mark all as red and it will mark them all as red. We can now see our um, testimonial here and you can see here that we've actually cloned it one time. This one I've actually cloned seven times, just for fun. Um, so there's quite a few things going on there. And it's me that's, that's doing this quite a lot. And you can see over the last couple of days, I've been creating quite a few submissions and messing around. But the interface is tuned, there's no add new button, there's no bulk actions, we don't really have to mess around with um, uh, all the other options that were there normally. It's relatively straightforward to work with. So, good luck to you all. Any questions, please do let me know, and I hope that's explained uh, those three plugins um, well enough. If not in doubt, um, please have a look at my documentation website, docs.tortoise-it.co.uk, and uh, I look forward to any feedback you can give. Thanks very much.